die if he sees a malach. But there was a miracle with regard to the mule. I don't know. I think that the malach, the, the first one you do the, 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 Can you see a malach? Period. I mean, this is the first time in the, in the, uh, this is the first time in the Torah, right? The, the, was there any, was there ever? Or, yes. Well, no, of course, no, 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 no. Said, but ish, why? How do you know who? Shimon. When Hashem said to launch it, I'm sending my, my ego. Yes, I, I will. It didn't happen yet, right? No. Moshe so, rejected it. Moshe said, Moshe said, I want you, and no, and no intermediary, right? Um, who, who would you say? You would say maybe uh, Abraham, and the, three, Abraham and, the three, and the three wanderers, right? Yes. But it says Anashim. Yes, they were. The Torah doesn't say Malachi. They were guys. They were masquerading. We know this because we were told this in first grade. We know this before. Because we were told when we were five years old, we were told, you know, we saw these angels. They were looking like men. Uh, we also know that they had some unusual capabilities because we went. To, they went to Lot and they told him, "Come with us. We're taking it out." Us out because uh, we're going to, we're going to, we, are, we are going to destroy the city. That sounds pretty powerful. But it says an Hashim, right? And because these guys ask for this to do gross and stuff like that, right? With sexual men. Uh, we understand that they are men. People in Sudan. No, no, oh, some saw them as men. Like, uh, maybe they didn't even see them, but they figured they would be people. Yeah, of course. They, they would be anything else. Um, and Jacob. Jacob, it says, we have H -H -E -E -E. a man fought with him all that night. And then he blessed him. And then, and then it was Yosef who was walking near Shem. That he saw a man. A man. Yes, I remember. Never, never do they say Malach. Mm -hmm. Not yet. I don't know of any. Do you know? In the Torah, no. uh, Daniel. Malachay Elohim. Go, Ubo, Malachay Elohim. Yaakov, coming back from Laban's house, coming to Eretz Israel, it says he came to a place, Ubo, Malachay Elohim, and he was met by, he was met by, Angels of God. Angels. Uh, 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 and, and also when he was dreaming, of course, so it says that he named Malachel or Imotin or Ibibo. He saw the ladder and he was sleeping, so he was dreaming that he saw angels going up and down. But that's not necessarily seeing them while awake. But here, when Yaakov comes home, it does say by Yikurubo Malachel Can you think of another example? I'm, I'm, I'm searching my memory banks where the Torah says somebody met an angel. In the text, I mean, I'm not talking about our, our five, five, five year old stories, I'm talking about the text. You took the No, it says Ish. I'm, think, I'm thinking about, I'm not talking about well, five year old stories, I'm talking about the story. The text. Well, then, uh, Who? No, it's wife. Yes. Of course, that's later in Tanakh. Um, yeah, up to this point, I'm talking about in the Torah, where where it says that the Malach was seen by oh, yeah, Aton, yeah. by the mule. And Tanakh also. Also later. I understand. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Torah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Up to this point. Up to this point, it's true. You're right that there are later examples. Up to this point, I know of Yaakov with the Malachi Elohim Yifogim by Yifogim. And I know this one here, where it says the Aton saw the Malach. Okay, so Ramban, so you're getting tired of my question. Yeah. Um, and, then he says, um, and then he says, the nature of seeing from among all the other qualities of man, you can touch, and you can hear, and you can smell, and you can taste, and you can see. So he says, seeing is different from all the other senses he has. You want to look at that? Uh, we're talking about seeing the angel. Then he talked about the, the nature, what's the secret of the seven uh, altars, uh, sacrifices that uh, he brought. And then he says, he says, 
special nature of the Jewish people that there is no lying among them. Boy, I'm why that was true. And the reason for this. And then he says, the reason, you might like this, the reason that no magic would ever work and charms would ever work against the Jewish people. Because according to the Ramban, magic is a real thing, you know? Yeah. You know? Oh, For thing. people that believe in that. No. He says there's a real thing that's in both ma magic, but the Jewish people cannot be affected by magic. And he says a reason. Remember last year we talked about astronomy, astrology, uh, why did God give the Ruach to the Lamb? Um, What was the special? What was the special miracle about the victory against the Malik? What's it got to do with this part? I don't know. Uh, okay. So what do you want to do? He has about 15 different topics, but they're really sort of strewn about like this. You want to see about sight? You want to see about? Right. Uh, so let's, 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 let's do that. It is Reish Tzadik It's Reish It's about uh, chapter 22, verse 41. 22, verse 41. Let's, let's start with that. We'll see what happens. Where it leads us. 22, verse 41. 22. Okay. Men. Allah. Right? Yes. So he says, Faiba Boker, what? Yes. Faiba Boker, Faikach Bilamet, Balaka Bilam Bayareu, Bamot Baal, Bayar Mishan Ketzei Ha'ab. He's going to talk about that. And he saw, so he went up to a place where he saw the edge of the people, of the Jewish people. So that. I mean, what is interesting, I suppose, you're gonna, it's, it's, every time he went somewhere, he went somewhere where he could see the people, right? So the question is, doesn't, if you want to curse somebody, do you have to see him? Not necessarily. You would think not, right? I could curse uh, somebody, maybe. I mean, maybe. Did he need to see them? Is it important to see? So I think that in this case, he's gonna talk about see. What's so important that about see? We'll see. That's what he wants to talk about, right? So he says, Memalev, Reish Tzadikimu, on that Ramban. Yeah. Chapter, yeah. So it's a short, it's a paragraph. You see it? Sir? Vayelehu Bamot, Vayal Baal, Baal, Vayar Misham Kseya. Hayama Aleoto, Vemakom Shir and Pihi, Balak took Bilam to a place high up where he could see them, right? Um, why is there a footnote? Yeah, shall operation of Neak Fala Lota Kula Kulam. Akena Yama Leo Makom Shiret Kase. Lai is the new to Toma Koma Shimbu in the Kala, about the Otola Kula, if Shala Kula Kula. Vazia Ayami Kashe, Payam Shan Kseya. Vazia Marabanki Ayama Leo Shiret Kula. Ah. Some people, some people do interpret this pasuk to mean the following. He went a few times already to try to curse them and he failed. He could not, right? This is another time he tried. Mm -hmm. So some people have this theory. Balak saw that when Bilam saw the entire people, all of the Jewish people, and he tried to curse them, he couldn't because most of the people, the majority of the people are okay. And God wouldn't want to curse the people who are okay. So if you see everybody and try to curse all the people, it doesn't work. So he said, oh, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll go up to a, a hillside where you can't see all the people. You only see a sum of the people, an edge of the people. And maybe among them there's enough people who are bad, and therefore you can curse them, and from that, Hashem will curse. That's one person's theory. The Ramban doesn't believe us. The Ramban rejects that. So we'll see in a moment. They are come, they are come, she read, and they are come, and he, and therefore, he said, he brought him to a place where he, they could, where he could see them all with his curse. And his, and his, 
you got how does he read it? And his soul would be connected with him, with them, will not be separated from them. His mind, he said, okay. Ki ela mi kachot ha nefesh li yod dveka beit haruiya ki adua mi inyan chachamim del daluli gavinai de ba'ina le mechze de la dalule yahav be ene benach nafshe vhi girakatu ki lo ra'a kol machane ki ayu chonim arba'ah degalim ba'avar kachot hashamayim v'fam hashini tamar lo balak efes kitzei utiwe v'kulo lo tiwe. כלומר, גם בפעם הזאת לא תראינו כולו, אם הוא הדבר המונע ממך כבדו, אבל כוונו לי משם, אם תוכל. כי אין לי מקום להראות לו כולו משם. Baba Kama, he says, Rabbi Yochanan Gavra Saba HaVamachim Umisrachi Gavina Amalehu Dalu Vienei Vachazei Dalu Vienei Vachazei Dalu Vienei Vachazei Dalu Vienei Vachazei Chazal Partish Vutei Sabar Achut Kamachayef Bey Chalashtai Vachanach Mavshei Oh, I don't know Yeah, I don't know I don't understand. Okay. Apparently he says that there is a special thing about when you put your eyes on somebody, you really can affect him. Huh? Uh, uh, don't ask me. So the people were, were, were camped in all four directions, right? In all four directions. And Balak every time wanted him to go to a place where he's high enough that he would see all of them. When he sees them, he could then curse them, right? With this special power that a person has when he sees. But in the second time, he thought that he should not see him, show him the entire place. If that's the reason that you cannot curse them is because you see all of them at once, but curse them from here where I show you now that you will only see a part of them. Right? Okay, I don't think this is going to help us much. No, yeah. So, so we're gonna have to go. Right. Um, where else? What about the miracle that the Aton saw of the uh, Amala? I mean, that's very strange. An animal should see Amala. Right? Um, Twenty-three, four. Then he says. Uh, yeah, there he says, uh, but, um, yeah, it's it's Chav Bey, Chav Gimel, right? Yeah. It's at 23, verse 23, correct? But there I don't know Malach Hashem, in the great study, right? Malachi Hashem hasachalim, hanigdalim, lo yira'u l'chushedayim. Okay, so first he tells you a rule. The real Malachim, which are, they are somehow spirits of the mind, or sechalim, I don't know, cognitive spirits that are completely separated from physical nature, or you're, they don't have bodies. This is the Ramban on 23. Yeah, and she, the, 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 right? 
So he says the real malachim, which are completely separate from physical, from physical nature, are never going to be seen by physical eyes. By eyes, ki einam guf, because they're not bodies. Nikusav mare. Right? You have to see something. You have to see something that's physical. The kasher yiraul lanevihim or lanchei haruach hakodesh kedaniel yasigu otam demarot hanefesh hamaskelet kasher tagir la malat hanavua or la madriga sheti. Right? So when 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 people encounter Malachim among the prophets, for example, that's not seeing with the eyes. That's a vision. A vision. Non-physical vision. Vision is physical, right? But I mean a vision we say of like a, a in a trance or in a prophet prophetic experience, they will experience the, as though they see the Malachim. Like right. you know, in the dream, right? That's the encounter. But not physical. So he says, like Daniel, like the other prophets, they will, they will, they will appreciate, they will experience them in the uh, seeing of the soul, right, of the, of the mind. When they rise up to the to a level of prophecy or something like that. But that an animal should be able to see a malach. It's impossible, right? Because on the one hand, an animal sees physical things. A malach is never physical, right? And if a malach is going to be seen by human beings who are very, very high in a prophet, then they're seeing somebody in their in their contemplation. But a mal, uh, but a, but an ass doesn't have contemplation, so it's impossible for him to see a malach so far, right? Not no. Either way, can't be it's a malach. Malach. It can't be physical. Al Cain to aton. Right. So you might be able to interpret when the Torah right. says, and the ass saw, it means to hear Gisha Badavar, She Mafridota Milavor. She sensed something. something. Right? I mean, animals do something, you know, if you're going with a horse someplace, and there is uh, something not quite safe ahead, before you even know it, the horse knows. It's not there, <coughs> they, they have uh, certain sensations of some you know, vibration or some kind of. Uh, uh, they maybe they smell the animal or smell some kind of danger. Yeah. So she, she felt that something in front of there is dangerous. So she didn't want to go. That doesn't mean that she saw the malach, but there was a presence there. So you might want to interpret that, right? You are cold. I do not like that. Because there is a person in this room who loves the cold. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't cold when we walked in. Who else is there besides us here who decided to make it cold? Must be something after the after. Okay. So she so she the, the Aton felt something. Something made her feel frightened from going there. And that's the Malach who was there. That's what she felt. Okay? Sensitive. So he's trying to say, he's trying to find a puzzle where you sometimes see, you sometimes use the word to see about the heart. My heart sees. Yes. My heart saw wisdom. So obviously the heart doesn't see with eyes, but it contemplates and appreciates wisdom. Which we mean to say about the understanding of something. Lo alabrehuts, and not about seeing. And when this miracle happened to the to the mule, the sam la and then God placed a miraculous ability to speak, which is ridiculous, right? Amrala Bilam, she said to Bilam, Hahaskaniskanti, La Sopakakaf, did I ever do this okay, dangerous things to you? Avaloyad ah Lama Asta Ata okay. But she did not know, the, the mule did not know why she said this. Because she just couldn't help it. It was a miracle that was brought upon her. Right? She couldn't, she didn't know that she was frightened because of her mother. She just knew that was, she was frightened and she couldn't go on. So he beats her. Right? And she says, why are you beating me? 
He said, because you just pushed your knee into the, into the wall. And she said, uh, have I ever done a bad thing to you ever since that you had me as a, from a young, uh, from a young moon? You? She didn't say to him, wait a moment, why are you doing this? Because there's a malak in front of us, that's why I'm saving you. Because she wasn't aware of what she was aware of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. She didn't see this sword in his hand and, uh, and all of that. She, her understanding, did not perceive that. The angel with the sword. She just had this trepidation. In a moment. That's, that's, a, that's a Navi who could appreciate a Malach in his, in his inner mind. In his inner sight, remember, but even the Nabiim don't see a Malach in the physical. In the physical, do not. Because the Malach is never seen in the physical, he says. He said he just saw the Ezekiel. Despite, despite all of that, those are all the dwarves. They're all prophecies, those are not experiences in the world. According to the Rambam, that's the way it goes, okay? So, so the Pasuk is a little bit dramatic, because what does the Bible say? And the Aton, read, read, 20, 22. 23, yeah. 23, where's my Kumash? Here, 23. The Bible doesn't say it that way. No, 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 it doesn't only say something. It doesn't say it says something. It's all so her. He says, by the... 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 God became angry that he went. By the... By the... By the... By the... By the... Right? And he was riding on an aton, and with two boys with him. Shein Arabito. Say there? 22, 22. No, you said that taxes. 22, 22. Right? I mean, physically it says, and the aton saw the malach standing in the way with the sword in his hand. And she pushed uh, off, the, off the path. So literally speaking, the Torah says, she saw the Malach with the sword, right? So we, the Rabban, very boldly, says, don't take that literally. That's not what the Torah is saying. She felt the Malach was there with the sword in his hand, correct. But she could not see that. She, she became frightened of something in front of her that she didn't even know. Remember, the Rambans have said that to us, right? Yeah. So the question is why... And he beats her, and she says, did I ever do any harm to you? She doesn't say, she doesn't say to him, she's now speaking to right? She says, hey, look ahead there, there's a Malak with a sword. Why should she say that? She doesn't say that because she doesn't know. She didn't see She didn't appreciate that in her mind. She doesn't appreciate that, right? After. Now she's talking to him about that. who is a prophet, opens his mind and perceives the law, not with his eyes, but with his mind. And so we've got a very complicated scenario here. Until that time, Hashem doesn't let him see. So he said, she became, she became, she began to feel as though somebody's going to kill her, right? There is a Malach with a sword. She doesn't see that, but she feels all of a sudden that she's in deadly danger. Like, a, like an animal can sometimes feel, okay? The im no mar ki a Malachi manir in the Newton or she, and if you want to say that the Malachim sometimes are a costume, like disguised in a physical form of a person, Kasher Iskarti, like I mentioned, he says where? The Reisha Parsha, in the beginning of our Parsha, the Parsha Vayera, Yusnu Afle Enea Behemot, in Cain, Eich Lo Yirenu Balim, Bilam, Velo Hukam Vesakberim. Right? If you want to tell me that sometimes he, he must be talking about some people, like our teachers when we were five years old. What happens? Right? And sometimes Malachim can be seen by people like you and me because they put themselves into a physical form. They clothe, they, they disguise themselves as a person so that they could be seen. If you want to see that, then 
how could you put it this way that the Adon, the ass, sees a Malach because he's looking like a human being. She sees him. And Bilam does not see him. He's not blind. He's not blind. To see? Physical? What? Lohu comes. He's, he's riding on the donkey and he hits and he hits the donkey. What do you mean he didn't see? He does see. Couldn't beat the donkey if he didn't uh, see. And he knows he's on the path. He's going. Because it's a contemplative thing, not the physical thing. Do you mean to say that Hashem actually created a blindness, physical blindness in his eyes? That's what that's what the Ramban feels is impossible because nobody says that he became blind. So he, he has this problem. He rejects the idea that Malachim can be seen by you and me. Now, you're going to have a little few problems in our, in our Bible. For example, the Manoah's wife, right? She's sitting in the field and she's uh, by herself. And a Malach comes and speaks to her. Now, what would that be? Is she seeing somebody? It looks like a person. Who looks like a person? Is she seeing somebody who looks like a person? According to him, not. And is she seeing? That's a good question. I mean, I mean the rabbi is going to have to. Maybe he'll deal with it. Okay, we'll see. Right? Afi tachem shehosif b'hasagat eneha mi shehosif ba hadibur. It is possible, he's saying, that the same God who made her able to speak could also make her appreciate the malach. That only a navi can do. Well, I mean, if somebody, could, if an animal could speak, so maybe an animal could be a navi. I mean, it's very strange, right? Virata ke adam, and she saw like something that looked like a person. Below is kiru bahakatu, and the and the pasuk doesn't say. And it doesn't say that God uncovered the eyes of the aton and she saw. The Malach, like it says with her husband, with her Could master. Could be both of the people said. Because remember when, when we were traveling from Egypt, all the dogs didn't even bark. Bark. So what happened? Jesus. This regular thing is that seeing a lot of people, a lot of things. Every day. They were singing Hallel. Maybe Hashem can do something. What would they do? What would he do? To fight it. But the same thing as Pinky is saying about it. So what, he, what is Pinky? I don't understand. What is Pinky saying? What do you think that Pinky is saying? That what? That Don? I don't know. Yeah. She gained fright. That's what the Ramban says. She gained fright. There was something. She didn't see. She couldn't see it. But she became frightened of something that felt dangerous. All right. And you say that the ask can see in a, in a level that maybe the, the enemy couldn't see. Well, that's what would be possible. Well, that's what the Ramban is saying you might want to say. If, if God can get her to speak, so maybe she could appreciate something also that is uh, beyond uh, anything that an animal can appreciate. Because all of this is a great miracle. And you know, there's an expression in the Gemara, uh, or is it the Mishnah? That there were ten things that were produ produced in the Mishnah. Ten things that were produced in the last minute before uh, the end of the six days of creation. The end of the sixth day, Friday afternoon. Towards evening, there were 10 things that were created that we don't see until later. And one of them is the speech of the Aton. Another one is the Kriyat Yamsuf. Another one is, uh, what? You know the 10? There are a few fantastical things that are against nature, that are outside of nature. So the way we understand it is that Hashem, in the world of creation, who set natural law, that's always going to be normal, He also put in the possibility of having something happen that is not normal. Right? Okay, like quantum mechanics. He created quantum mechanics Friday afternoon before, before sunset. 
Okay. The mechanic says that this is here and not here at the same time. Thank, thank you. Enjoy it. Who's, so, of course, that's more? impossible. It seems like it's impossible, but it's part of quantum mechanics, which oh. apparently they say is true. Oh, I, right. I, I don't understand this. Right? But, so, so that she is that kind of maze, her speech. Oh, right. Okay. They know Nikra Galui Enayim Bilbad, and okay, so the, 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 the opening of her mouth might include also the ability to see. And, and what's the reason for this miracle? What's the reason for this miracle? Okay. Now, you understand, Bilam is a Navi. He's riding, he's riding the donkey, and he usually is a prophet. So he should be able to, he should be able to, in his inner mind, Appreciate the Bible, not physically, right? But he should be with his with his mind, with his prophetic ability to be able to see a Bible. But he doesn't. Now, she, the the donkey or the mule, does somehow appreciate a Bible. So why should there be a miracle like this? What's the big deal? Why is the reason for that? See, he says, Bilam to show Bilam, mi sam pel adam o mi asum ilay. To show him who is it that God, who is it that gives people the ability to speak and the ability to see, right? Yeah. Or to or to or to make people not be able to see. Levodio, because you see, I now don't let you appreciate something God says, you Ulam, and I give the ability to appreciate something to the animal. It's not what you'd expect, right? So you see that my will is the thing that makes things happen, that people can see or speak or not speak, right? In order to show him that Hashem uh, opens the mouth of those people who cannot speak. And also that he certainly can make people not be able to speak, those people who do speak. And he will put words in their mouth in order to speak to what he wants them to speak because everything is in his, in his control. And to warn him, and therefore he should not go out to some magic and curse them. Because, this is something he says, which is another matter, is that he was only, he was a magician, he wasn't really a prophet. So what's the idea? It bothered me, I don't understand. What's the message? The message is, God wants to show him, listen, you see the donkey speaks, and you, and she appreciates something, and you don't. So now I want to show you, by this example, is that I'm in control in the world, and if I want to make somebody speak, even an animal, I can make her speak, and if I want you not speak. I can make you not speak. I can command you not to speak the curses. And if I want to, I can put into your mouth the words that you don't even choose to do, like the blessing, right? Yes. Now, what bothers you about that? Does that bother you? Does it sound okay? Nothing bothers you. I didn't think so. I'll tell you what bothers me about it. It doesn't surprise me. It, it would not even surprise me if I saw an animal speak that God makes the animal speak. It's okay, I understand. God can do anything. God can do anything. But I also know that God created the world in such a way that human beings have freedom of will. Animals don't have freedom of will. So God gives them instinct so that they will always do what their instincts do. And once in a while, if God wants to, he can make them walk on three feet instead of four feet. He can make them speak. He can make them roll over twice. I mean, even if they don't want because they don't have freedom of will, so God controls anything that he wants in the world. He can split the sea, right? But God doesn't make people fly, and God doesn't make people speak. I, I, would, I would say that the lesson to do is if you know something about human beings, you would say, okay, God, you're, you're very special. You have a lot of power. You can do anything you want. But you can't make a person bless instead of curse. Because a person chooses to say what he wants to say. Do you ever, God, actually make a person he wants to say bless, and God will make him say curse, curse, even though his mind is telling him to say bless? 
that do that? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. So the whole story of Bilam, when, when we come to the whole story, let's say, so in the end, if this lesson is the lesson according to the Ramban, so then in the end when Bilam stands there, at the end, the climax of the story. Is this related? The climax of the story. He comes to the end. He wants to curse them. And he blesses them instead. Is that God twisting his speech to make him say a blessing? That's God speaking, so to speak, through his voice, through his mouth? Some people say that. I mean, I'm going to tell you that the Ramban might be saying Bilam wanted to curse them. He was cursing them. But, he, but the words that came out are blessings. Yeah? So if you say that, that God controlled him like he controlled the 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 But then, what's the big story? Let's say a man wants to curse the Jews and God wants to bless the Jewish people instead. What difference does it make if the man is twisting his mouth and he says blessing instead of cursing? Does it matter to you if somebody curses you? Who cares? God, God blesses the Jewish people. So if somebody says, oh, the Jewish people are cursed, I curse the Jewish people. Does it, does it bother the Jewish people if that's the case? Or what? In history, does it make any difference? Um, if God blesses them, so he blesses them. I mean, who cares? Now, some people explain the whole story is differently. Bilan himself, after trying to curse them a few times, saw, because he's a prophet, saw that God was really very unhappy with them. He went, it says, He never, he didn't go with magic anymore. He went around and tried to contemplate about God himself and what God wants him to do. And then he got up there the last time and blessed them with his full heart. For the moment, we know that he was an evil person. Later on, he decides that he wants to uh, get them after the Midianite women and, and have them fail. But for the moment, he became inspired. That's another way of looking at the story. For the moment, he became inspired, and he actually blessed them. So, I don't understand the whole story of the But I mean, who cares what happened? He knew well, that his, his prophecy came from Hashem, the God of Israel. He says he was a magician or something. So he knew yeah, that he wanted... Have, we have to understand he his knew mind. That God, that God, yeah, that God can give you prophecy, but I can also use magic. You know, do a little bit of both. Black magic will be working as well. The God is a God, and the black magic is black magic. I don't know. I, I'm being paid money not to do what God wants me to do. I'm being paid money to do what black magic is going to do, so I will do that. But he frustrates him again and again. Listen. So the Ramban is trying to say that this business of the animal is to teach him that God will control us all right here. Yeah, just that like we see at the just end. Like, of story. Like, and if you say that the end of the story is God's control, then that's according to the Ramban. That works out very nicely, you know? To teach us. To teach him. And to ask that he is in control of everything. Well. If something is related to his work. Like uh, we see uh, today with the missiles going up. So when uh, <laughs> so when so when so when the place so when the European uh, so when the European uh, demonstrators march and they say Israel is cursed and Israel is Nazi and Israel is murdered and Israel is this and Israel is that and then God doesn't have to do anything, right? He lets them do it. <laughs> Why? Because of the why does it, why does he not make the protesters walk in the street and want to say that and then say Israel is wonderful, Israel is great, Israel is the most righteous? Why don't you do that? Everybody is doing that, right? Because they don't want, but he didn't want, but he, so, but you say Bilal didn't want either, but Bilam didn't want either, and Hashem just controlled his tongue, like the Aton. So the Savior, why don't you do it? Um, by the way, I'm, I, it's not my question. The Nabi himself, I think it's the most, or the reality, who says, listen, remember, we have it in the Haftarah, this Parsha, remember Bilal, who wanted to curse you, and Hashem turned it into blessing. 
Remember, you, you read that Torah, no? Our, our Torah. Where is it? Torah, I suppose. Torah, I'll tell you where it comes from. I don't remember the Torah. Do you remember? Uh, no. But you will see, you will read it this Shabbat. I'm pretty sure that that's the one. Balak. It comes from Micha. Micha, Micha. Right? It says here, you don't please remember. Uh, Ami, my people, yeah. what did I do to you, and why did you, that I took, and why did I bring you to 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 uh, to rebel against me? Because I took you out of Eretz Mitzrayim from the house of slavery, and I took you, Paditi, I, I, I redeemed you, and I sent Moshe and Aaron before you. Now remember what Balak wanted to do, the Melech Moab. And what did Vilan say to him, Ben Beor? Uh, in order to know the, the, the righteousness of God. Now you can interpret that to say, Balak wanted him to curse him. And what did Bilam answer him? He answered him, this nation is a blessed one and not a cursed one. I mean, according to that pasuk, it could be that he chose, he, he realized the truth. He told him that in the beginning, but then he tries to, to curse anyway because he's uh, getting money, so I might as well try, right? But then he saw. Yeah. So why did he go? But he knew he wouldn't get the money unless he cursed. So he thought he would get away with it. He thought he would curse. Otherwise, you don't go to fail, right? You go to succeed. Not going to get paid. So he thought he will curse them. If it's psychological, then he could say, I wish I could curse them, but he tries, and then he sees that they're wonderful, so he can't bring himself to curse them. That, that could be all between him as a free human being, instead of God you know, controlling his mind. But that changes the story somewhat, right? But according to Micha, well, I want you to remember what Balak wanted to do and what Bilam answered him. That's what he said. He doesn't say that God twisted the answer. He says, what was the answer? Somebody wanted to curse you and Bilam answered him. Hashem is the one who curses and blesses and this nation is blessed, so I can't curse them. That's the answer he gave him. And that's what he wants the Jewish people to know, that Hashem has always blessed them and that they shouldn't rebel against them. So Micha is it's a very simple story, no? It doesn't have to be magic. Um, and he says why he blesses them because they don't have lying and they don't have cheating and they don't have that. I mean, he sees their qualities. It's not. And he praises them for the things that are true, that are good about them. So if you want to give somebody a million dollars to join the uh, the boycott club, right? And and they do, and they do join the boycott club. But then they visit Israel and they see that Israel is a wonderful country. So then they change their mind and they're not going to do that. That's all. So Bilam, Bilam thinks he's going to do this because he's getting a million dollars. And then he sees, uh, I can't do this. They take God out of the picture. I don't know. For the moment he did. I mean, but he's a character. He's a very complicated character. Um, We read, we read in, uh, when we learned uh, some Hendrik, the uh, 10th parish, we did read what Dylan wanted to do. Don't you remember? Remember the 10th parish, the parish Hele? Whoever that's who we're going to do tomorrow. Remember? What did Dylan want to do? So Dylan knew, there's a Medrash in the tomorrow. Dylan knew that every day, at a certain time in the morning, there's an instant, there's an instant of time, very, very infinitesimal, small instant of time where God is angry. He's angry at the world, he's angry because he's frustrated that he wanted this world to be a righteous world and things aren't going well, there's a vote of Zara, there's this, there's that, so he gets angry. But only for this little tiny instant. Then he decides, I know the world is terrible, but I want the world to continue because one day it's going to be good. You know what I mean? It's sort of like a little mixed feeling that twists for a moment. So Bilam, Gemara says, knew that moment. 
and he thought that if he could remind God Maybe. at that moment of the Maybe. some of the failings in the Jewish people, you know, if somebody said Lashonara just now, and somebody Maybe. ate the trains of uh, meat, and somebody said that God would say, and he would just overflow his temper and destroy the Jewish people. At that moment, that, that, you know, when, when he loses his temper, I mean, it sounds almost blasphemous, the story, but the Gemara says that, right? So he tried to do that. So you know what happened? That God confused the time that day when he wanted to it, right? It's sort of like he changed, changed the axis of the earth and the time changed, so God was angry at a different time, and therefore when he wanted to curse them, it wasn't the right time. Like uh, this year, we are going out in the because the axis of the earth is So, I mean, so that's a fantastical idea. The question is, where? Bela, Neil. Oh, he's a smile. Or maybe he's a prophet, so God let him in on the secret. I'm showing the one to the nation. That's the and I think that potentially he could have been great reference. But um, he chose, he chose to go the wrong way. But listen, don't you ever say to yourself, listen, I am not such a, I, I say to myself, I'm not such a great Jew, you know, but God would actually speak to me. If I actually encounter God, oh, I would be a perfect person forever. Right? But, so here's Bilal, who you say is a prophet. He could have been like Moshe, yeah. right? He encounters God, and then he chooses, you know, I think I'm going to do that. I mean, is that, is that, is that reasonable? I mean, it's amazing, no? It's a reasonable thing. So, so you would have to say, yes, that's true. Am Israel stood in front of our Sinai. God spoke to me. And we all say, if God spoke to me, then I'm a perfect person. Perfect right? But God speaks to them. And a little bit later, they go and say, they worship the Aga. The, the so you see, you know, to say, extraordinary spiritual experiences of climactic type do not I think that's an important uh, message. You know, what changes the person is hard work, and slow and easy, and developing and, and, and willpower, and, 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 and having temptation, and you know, trying to overcome and so on. And even if God talks to you one day, you're not going to ask for him. You say, God, if only you would inspire me, I know I would have been one day. You know, 